observe these propaganda leaflets deployed by the Japanese against the Australians fighting them in World War II. And you will see the desperation of them not to fight the Australians. One might even surmise that the Japanese were actually really frightened of Australian troops. And if you did think this, you'd be spot on the money, because actually they had learnt that Australians were very dangerous indeed. However, let's start from the beginning. When the war began, the Japanese had beaten everyone they'd ever invaded. They'd absolutely annihilated China, they'd kicked the US from the Philippines, they'd taken Singapore, and everyone they'd ever fought, they'd beaten. As a result, the Japanese and most other people at the time started to think the Japanese might be invincible. As a result, they completely underestimated Australians, thinking we were nothing but an inferior nation of convict descendants whom they had nothing to fear, and by gum were they wrong. For you see, the first allied nation ever to beat Japan were the Australians at Milne Bay. And the 7th Brigade who beat them came from Brisbane. Admittedly, the 7th Brigade was also supported by two RAAF units from Darwin and Newcastle, who bombed and strafed the shit out of the Japanese with P-40 Kitty Hawks. But, if you were to think that the 7th Brigade was the only dangerous thing to be sent to battle from Brisbane, you'd be dead wrong. But you see, they were nothing but a rifle round in a great sea of weapons that Australia was teaching Japan the meaning of fear and shame with. Another force to call Brisbane home was that of a lion feasting on sheep, for it was none other than the largest US submarine fleet in the Southern Hemisphere, and it was based in New Farm. And boy, did these guys lead the Japanese to the slaughter. By the end of the war, those from this fleet had sent 117 Japanese ships and other things to the bottom of the ocean. This included three heavy and two light Japanese cruisers. Do you remember earlier I mentioned the RAAF Kitty Hawks that fought at Milne Bay? Well, those planes and many other warplanes borrowed by the RAAF used a V-12 Allison engine and any improvements and repairs were done here in Brisbane. And the company that oversaw this task was Holden. What's interesting is... These improvements were done in conjunction with Hangar No. 7, which is a top-secret installation that took enemy planes that had been shot down and rebuilt them here in Brisbane to learn their secrets and create tactics on beating them. When learning some of the secrets of what the Zero and other planes were capable of, this information was given on to the Allison Engine Factory, so speed and capability could be improved, and as a result, the findings went on to help win the war. Not to be outdone, the local Ford factory built the amphibious vehicles that would help ferry troops for the land assaults for the armies that would retake conquered lands taken by the Japanese. Speaking of stuff like this, Evans and Deacon, a large engineering firm here in Brisbane, got onto the wartime construction, making at least 11 Bathurst class corvettes. And quite a lot of these ships went on to wreak absolute havoc on Japanese forces. Some of these were used to ferry troops into battle, and others to support those soldiers with suppressive fire. Others were used to hunt down submarines, like the HMAS Ipswich, or used to protect convoy ships moving vital supplies to and from Allied ports. Speaking of vital supplies, remember at the beginning of this clip I said the 7th Brigade was but a rifle round in a great sea of weapons coming from Brisbane? Well, what you see in front of you is that of the Rockley Munitions Factory. And this place was absolutely huge, covering over 80 acres and employed mostly women who laboured 24 hours a day, seven days a week, making said rifle rounds. So that their boys and their allies fighting on the front had the means of taking victory after victory that you've actually read about. They also made bullets for other weapons, such as the pistols and the machine guns and artillery shells as well. Another dangerous foe for the Japanese residing in Brisbane was that of General Douglas MacArthur and his forces. This dude was literally born on an army base. Here, he liaison with many other mighty leaders, as Brisbane had become a staging point for the Allies for the retaking of Asia and the Pacific. Think about that. Much of the planning for these campaigns was done in this very room, and you can visit it yourself at the MacArthur Museum. Last but not least, 
Australia's Bletchley Park was also located in Brisbane. It's called Narambla House and it was located in Ascot. It was their intel that led to the victory of Guadalcanal. It was their decoding that found that there are places that had more Japanese troops than others, and thus the Allies could attack with surgical precision, taking lightly defended targets and running rings around Japanese targets. Two other major victories that happened due to the intel of this place were the Battle of Moritai Island and the Battle of Hollandia. But these people were sworn to secrecy, so it's unlikely we'll ever know how many codes they actually broke. So you see, our soldiers fighting on the front lines were not the only danger that the Imperial Japanese forces were fighting. No, they were fighting a unified Brisbane and an entire Australia working in conjunction with our allies to push our enemy back. And that's exactly what they did.